Welcome to another video here on Tobacco University. In this video, we're going to be looking at animal versus human hairs and different regions when you want to look at and inspect them and how an animal hair would compare to that of a human hair so you could hopefully distinguish between the two. So first off, human or animal. There are some general characteristics of each type of hair that can help uh, initially classify it as whether you're looking at a human hair or an animal hair. Because if you find something at the crime scene, even though there may have been humans involved, uh, you want to be able to rule out or classify it as just human or animal in the general category. So first off, animal versus human hair, looking at the general size. For length, the human scalp hairs tend to be longer than most animal hairs. We're looking at the diameter. Human hairs are usually in the range of 0.05 to 0.15 uh, millimeters. Animal hairs can be narrower or in coarser. So just that quick little comparison there uh, can help you initially start to classify it. A lot of this comes with just seeing a lot of samples as well. Now, animal versus human hair, looking at the pigmentation in particular. Well, for human hairs, generally consists in pigment throughout the hair shaft with slight increase in density towards the cuticle. For animal hairs, the color is more centrally distributed throughout the more dense towards the medulla region. We're looking at the color banding. For human hairs, when untreated, it can usually lack banding, while animal hairs will have a banded appearance to them. For hair treatments, uh, human hair can be treated and animal hair uh, rarely exhibits dyeing, bleaching, or other cosmetic treatments. So again, keep that in mind when you're looking at uh, investigating hair, the pigmentation portion. Now looking at the medulla region, so when we're looking at kind of the microscopic view of comparing, uh, comparing these hair types. For human hairs, they only have an amorphous medullar structure. Animal hairs can have a complex, regular, geometric uh, cellular medulla. For the medullary index, which is the ratio of the diameter of the medulla to the diameter of the actual hair, the human hair is almost always less than one-third, and animal hair is usually greater than one-third, a lot of times often greater than one-half. And we kind of see some examples here identifying them. We have the buffalo, the camel, um, the cow, the horse, the donkey, the sheep, the goat, the dog, and the cat here. And this little sidebar here is 62 and a half um, micrometers for comparison. Now, kind of the anatomy of the human hair versus the animal hair provides with a lot of kind of uh, comparison points. So if you're looking at the shaft region, animal hairs tend to have different shapes uh, than humans, such as that uh, spatulate shape found in rodent hairs. If you're looking at the root of the hair, well, human hair will have a bulb um, or ribbon um, shaped root, while animal hairs tend to have different shaped roots, typically kind of brush-like in their appearance. At the tip of the hair, uh, particularly human hair of the scalp, is usually cut or frayed at the tip, while animal hair is usually that has that natural kind of taper to it. So when we're looking at the scale region of human hair, only exhibits irregular, annular uh, kind of scale patterns, while animal hair will have a variety of types and can have more than one uh, type in, within the same hair. Lastly, looking at the cross section, animal hairs tend to have some more unusual shapes. For example, um, kind of like a dog bone um, like shape, which is uh, evident of, of rabbit hair as just one example, or a cigar shaped, uh, and that is evident that of a seal. So those are just some obvious kind of cross section shapes that can help you potentially identify or classify what animal it came from. So keep in mind, there's a lot of comparisons that can be made between human and animal hairs. And while humans may be animals, we're looking at the different types types of species of animals, and hopefully this provides you with kind of some quick little regions to look at and how to identify whether it's human or if it's animal here.